Welcome to the Can't Stop the Growth podcast, the home service podcast dedicated to personal and leadership development. I'm your host, Chad Peterman, and if you're ready to grow as a leader, you've come to the right place. Let's jump in. So today we're going to talk about how uh, our leadership is related to our pursuit of excellence. And when you talk pursuit of excellence, there's a number of different definitions. Frankly, everybody has their own definition of what excellence is to them. We also know a lot of people who don't pursue excellence on a daily basis. Uh, they're fine with the the status quo the you know just getting by what do they call it punching in punching out uh they're just there to you know collect a paycheck and obviously those are people that we have to interact with and sometimes there are people that can drag us down um there are people that you know tend to find an issue with everything or, uh, you know, oh, that can't be done or, well, that's impossible or I don't want to do that or whatever the case may be. And so when we think about the pursuit of excellence, we oftentimes need to lead on optimism, positivity, and belief because ultimately those three items are a leader's, whether it's leading yourself or, or leading a group, Those are our three most powerful weapons, optimism, positivity, and belief. And really the last, I think, three times we have talked, we've talked a lot about positivity. And I talk about this because I feel like it is one of those things that we constantly need reminded of, right? Positivity is, can be fleeting. You know, I consider myself a very positive person, but uh, I would imagine if you asked my wife, there are times uh, when I'm not so positive. Uh, you know, when the kids won't get in the car. Uh, there's not a lot of positivity swirling around the garage when they won't get in the car. Um, there's a lot of hurry up and get in your seat. Stop throwing things. Please be quiet. Don't spill anything in the back of the car. And so understanding that your mood, your you know, outlook on things is going to change, but it's about managing that. It's about understanding that there are going to be tough times. There's going to be, you know, uh, in our line of business, there's going to be bad days. There's going to be crappy jobs. There's going to be all of that. But what we have to understand is that regardless of what is presented to us, there's an opportunity to get better. There is a chance today that you can better yourself if you want to. Or, and Friday is probably the most used day for this, you can somewhat mail it in. Just get through the day, get to the three-day weekend that we have coming up, and not focus entirely on getting better. And there again, getting better doesn't mean I got to go run through that wall today. Getting better just simply means I'm going to take something that I maybe didn't do so well yesterday or something that, hey, maybe I did well yesterday and I, I think maybe I can do it even a little bit better. Or I'm going to see if what I did yesterday and it worked, I'm going to see if that works today. Maybe it's doing the same thing that you did yesterday because it did work. Well, hey, let's, let's, uh, let's try to ratchet up some consistency here and then maybe we'll, we'll start to, to create a habit. The same goes for leading a team. How is my team going to get better? And I've talked about this a lot. You know, the one thing that I am guilty of in trying to get better, um, I spoke about it at the, uh, the holiday party in, back in January. I can't believe we're already in September. Um, is not so much, you know, we're, we're a company and we get bigger, right? I mean, we get bigger. Um, but sometimes what that takes away from is getting better. And so what we talked about at the holiday party was this year was going to be a year focused on getting better. Now, 
getting better each day is far more difficult than getting bigger. Getting better is far more difficult than getting bigger. Why is that? Well, because getting better, you gotta really work on yourself. You gotta do some soul searching. Where getting bigger can mask uh, a lot of the hard work that goes into getting better. And so, you know, a lot of our focus this year has been around training and development and how do we add resources. We have the, you know, the tech assist role now, which I'm super excited about. We had another guy, uh, I don't think he's up live and running yet, but he's going to be out in Colorado, so he can be helping us later into the evening, which is going to be awesome. Um, you know, all of these things that, you know, allow us to get better, you know, a, a resource for a technician, if you get stumped or looking at something weird and just need another set of eyes, you know, you've got that resource. And so as we get better, the important thing as we're pursuing our own definition of excellence is to understand that there is literally no problem that cannot be solved. Because there is someone out there doing it. So whatever your best result is, for instance, whatever your you know, best month is that you've had this year, what I would tell you, and I don't tell you this to be demeaning or you know, slap, slap in the face, but what I'm telling you is, is there is an opportunity to make it better. Even if better seems somewhat impossible. Because what I can tell you is that there's probably someone out there doing it. And you too could do it as well. Think about your best month and think about how many calls you potentially just mailed in. And I'm not saying didn't try or didn't do anything, but you know, if you thought back on it, there was, yeah, I probably could have, I probably could have taken a different angle. I probably could have worked that, a, a, you know, a, a different way. And, you know, I just didn't, you know, once I hit resistance, I immediately just kind of, you know, I just wasn't feeling it, whatever. Kids were up late, you know, it's all sorts of things. And I'm not saying, well, you just need to forget about all those other things. And <laughs> that's life. <laughs> I'd love to tell you, well, just be positive all the time. That would be great, you know? Well, yeah, that would be. That'd make life a hell of a lot easier, right? But that's not real life. And so it's about managing that. It's about keeping what your pursuit of, what your idea of excellence and what that pursuit looks like front and center. Understanding that I've just got to get a little bit better. Just a little bit better today than I was yesterday. You know, one of the things that I see in that, that people struggle with as it relates to pursuing excellence is that oftentimes you don't know the answer. Oftentimes you're not sure where to go. And what I'm here to tell you is that's perfectly fine. To pursue excellence is to pursue something that you have not yet attained. You're probably not going to have the answer. You're probably going to have to do things where you're unsure of what the outcome may be. Think about that. Think about that as it relates to, you know, I, I see all the, the uh, posters up around. It looks like you guys did, you know, maybe an exercise and and asking good questions to a customer. So there's a lot of times where you don't know if asking those good questions, they're, they're good questions, but you don't know what the outcome is. What if the customer just shuts down and just doesn't answer or says, hey, I gotta go get on a conference call. I'll be in my office. Well, hold on, I got all these great questions to ask you. Hey, come back here. What, what happens then? Well, we could, you know, mosey on down to the furnace and do what we need to do and then walk back up and walk out the door and say, well, I would have done something, but, you know, he was on call. So it wasn't my fault. It was somebody else's. Or 
Do we say, do we walk in? Do we walk in maybe with the understanding that that is the likely, that that's what's likely to happen? I mean, think about all the people working from home these days. I mean, if you walk into a house and are surprised or irritated that someone just went off into their office to take a phone call, what do you, how many, you've been running many calls lately? Like, I would assume that's probably the majority of people. Because in today's day and age, you can be pretty much anywhere working, right? I mean, all you gotta do is have your phone. I'm on a call, I gotta call somebody. Hey, you're doing that, I don't need to be over there with you. So what if that was your expectation? How would your actions change if you adjusted your expectation? If you were intent on getting a little bit better? See, oftentimes as we pursue excellence, we are hoping we'll pursue excellence so long as everything is easy along the way. That's human nature, right? Shit. <laughs> I don't want to do that because that seems really, really hard. You know, I was talking to, Pat was talking about, you know, his, his kind of, uh, his weight loss and everything like that. And, you know, that is probably one of the, the harder things to do. Exercise and eat right. That's a hell of a lot easier to eat pizza. Because it tastes good. I love it. It's great. Well, probably not the right thing to do. Well, so if the road is not easy, but we understand that it's not easy. Oftentimes, you will have to do things in order to get better, and you won't know the outcome. You will be unsure of how things are going to turn out. What I encourage you to do is go take that leap of faith. Because more times than not, it's not going to hurt you. I mean, don't do anything risky, please. Somebody like you may need to sign a form. I'm not, not, not telling you to do anything risky. But what I am telling you to do is reach for those things where you don't know the answer. Because on the other side of that is you getting better. So many people will delay action until they have all of the answers. Well, but what about this? Well, what about that? Well, what about this? Well, what about that? I don't know. Do something. And then we'll find out along the way. I mean, as long as no one's going to die, we well, should be good. Like, what's the worst that could happen? We break something? We break stuff every day. Don't let not having the answer get in the way of you moving forward. And the thing that allows us to do that is again one of your most valuable weapons and that is belief. Do you believe in yourself? If you think about that, I bet all of us could name 10 or 20 people in our lives that lack belief in themselves. I mean, it's really kind of an epidemic here in today's society is a lack of belief in yourself. You will never achieve something you thought impossible, and it will be very hard to get better each day if you do not believe in yourself. It's hard sometimes. It's hard a lot of the time. I know I need to eat the right thing, but God, that looks good. I'm going to have that. Then what transpires after that is, man, I, I, I just can't do this. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Because you can do anything you set your mind to. We prove it every single day. You prove it every single day. Think about where you've come from just in the past couple of years. Think about all the successes that you've had. Think about all the things that you're able to do now that you may not have taken inventory of, but yet you are better than what you were before. 
It's when we focus in on those things. It's when we understand who it is that we want to become and we drive towards that, we get results a heck of a lot faster than if we just fall into them or we sit there waiting for something to happen. We sit there waiting for that promotion or that move from maintenance to service or apprentice to lead installer, whatever it may be. We sit there waiting, waiting for someone to come tap us on the shoulder and say, hey, it's your turn now, rather than going out there and just taking it. The thing that's stopping you from taking it is the belief in yourself. That's all. That's all that's stopping it. You can blame whoever you want. There's, trust me, there's a lot of people to blame. And our world will blame anybody and everybody. Just watch the news. Actually, don't watch the news, but just take my word for it. I've seen the news, and they will blame everybody. So what does it look like to take that control of your own outcome? What does it look like to believe in yourself? The important thing to remember when it comes to believing in yourself, having optimism, positivity about your life and where you're going, is to understand that there is no finish line. I've talked about this before. There is no, one of the easiest examples is parenting. There is no finish line. I mean, some may say when they move out of the house or whatever, but you never stop being a parent. My parents are still parents to me. They give me their opinion frequently. Actually, more now than they ever did before. So if there is no finish line, how does that affect who you're going to become? Because at the end of the day, you can always continue to get better. Now, those things may change at what you're getting better at, no doubt. But if there is no finish line, then there's also an opportunity every day to get better. There will never be a day where you can't get better at something. Now, to some, getting better is equated with effort, right? It's like, well, I'm not going to get better this week because I'm on vacation or I just want to relax. I need to take a nap. I do need to take a nap later. My God. Whew. Uh, luckily, we got a three-day weekend coming up. But understand that you are moving towards continuing to better yourself, not a destination. You know, they always talk about it's, it's about the journey, not the destination. Well, that is excellence because there's always a little bit better. There's always a next level. The same thing goes as we are leading others and inspiring that excellence in them through our positivity, through our optimism, whatever it is that you are charged with. Even if you're not leading others, your positivity and optimism will have an effect on others and their desire to pursue excellence because they see you doing it. You know, I talk about my, my daughter and I'm watching my son now, you know, they go to daycare and we don't change much from when we're one or two years old. We just watch others and we emulate. You do it with your parents, you know, they say, hey, your actions are a hell of a lot more powerful than your words. If you tell a kid to do something, but if you show them that you do it as well, well then they're a heck of a lot more apt to follow. And I watch my kids do it right now. You know, 
they walk because, well, the other three kids in their class are walking. I'm like, hey, I'll try that. That sounds good. I'll eat that. Like, I don't even think they know half the time what they're eating, but my friend's doing it, so I'm all in. They'll eat it at school, but they won't eat it at home. I'm like, you've literally had this for lunch. Like, come on. It was good there. It wasn't so good here. It's the same thing. So as we lead others, the important thing to remember is that our actions, the way in which we lead ourselves, is extremely, extremely powerful. The way you carry yourself today as a service technician, as an installer, whatever that may be, the way you carry yourself the passion for which you pursue excellence will ultimately be a key to your success. As it relates to leading yourself, what does it look like for you to come in with a positive, upbeat attitude? That's it's infectious. It, there, there are people that will grasp onto that and they will follow you because they want to. No one wants to follow the mopey guy over there. No one does. Now, they may have to, but that's going to be a really crappy experience. But what does it look like to really be energized by who it is that you work with? Who it is that you serve? Now, part of that is creating that positive outlook, having optimism for what it is that you're tackling. But the other part, and maybe the most important part, as it relates to your pursuit and those you lead's pursuit, is showing them that you care. Same thing goes with the customer. What do we always say? Build a relationship and build trust, and the rest shall follow. If you get them out of order, it won't work. Because no one wants to buy anything or have someone in their house that's an ass. So don't be that. Same thing goes with coworkers. It's very hard to follow someone who you don't think gives a rip. You're just a number. You're just another means to an end. So if you're leading people, show them that you care. Tell them you care. Invest in them. How can I help you? You know, as a leader, your job is not to tell people what to do. It is to remove obstacles so that they can be successful. Because at the end of the day, Jared today can't run a service call. He's not going to. He's not going to install a furnace. His job is to remove obstacles so that you guys can be successful. If you got a problem, if there's an issue, his job is to fix it so that you can be successful. When you're in a customer's home, your job is to remove obstacles so that that customer can be comfortable, so that their plumbing works. So they don't have any issues. They feel safe in their home. Whatever it is, your job is to remove obstacles so that your customer can be the hero. You're not the hero. As a leader, you're never the hero. You're just walking alongside people so that they can be heroes, so that they can pursue excellence. That's the hardest part about leadership is you have to be understanding that you're going to be in a position where you're going to put others excellence before yours. Your reward is watching people succeed, watching others hit their goals. Yes. Is there a combination of them hitting their goals to where you'll hit yours? Yeah, absolutely. But you're never going to hit yours if you don't help them hit theirs.
And if you figure that out, let me know, because that would be really interesting at how that would work. Over index in care and compassion, in a positive attitude, in optimism for whatever situation is presented to you. That is all a choice. All a choice. Regardless of the situation. I mean, even the crappiest of situations, there is an opportunity to get better. And it comes down to our perspective. What is your perspective on things that happen in your life? Think about things that have happened this week. You know, we're to Friday now. I'm sure that there's been good things, bad things, things that didn't really matter, all kinds of things that have happened to you. Now, focus on the things that in the moment you viewed as a bad thing. You know, for me, a bad thing was the fact that I stayed up till 1230 last night and watched Purdue lose. But the opportunity was, is that hopefully me riding on three hours of sleep, but still coming up here shows that I really care about this stuff. This is important to me. My wife could not understand why I rolled out of bed this morning. And there was a moment there, my first few steps, where I was a little bit concerned about what I was doing. But that passes as you make it in, you know, uh, you know, turn on the lights and get a cup of coffee and start to start, start to feel normal again. That was a thing that I could have looked at with a lot of disdain. Poor planning on my part. Ugh, probably should have thought about the game starting at 8 o'clock at night and then having to get up and drive to Lafayette in the morning. But I wasn't going to cancel. Why? Because I was a little bit tired. That's been on the calendar for quite a while. You guys have probably already mapped your week out around it. You guys got up early. I should be able to do the same. Everything in life is an opportunity. There are no bad things. There are things that are tough to get through, for sure. Everybody's going to go through tough times. You know, the death of a loved one or disease or whatever it may be, there's always going to be those things. And I'm not saying, like, we'll just dismiss that it's a tough time. But what if, you know, while terrible, someone coming down with something or having a disease or whatever it may be, what if that's an opportunity to spend some more time with them? What if that was the thing you needed that kind of, you know what, shoot, I have really not been doing what I needed to do. You know, last night I took my, took my kids over to, after I picked them up from school, took them over to, uh, I guess it's their great-grandparents, my grandparents. And, you know, one of the things that really hit me was, I need to probably do this more. They live right in town. They love seeing the kids. And I've been kind of neglecting letting them see them. Now, did, was it... You know, is it always hard to load up two kids and haul them here and haul them there and they got to get to bed and all this stuff? Yeah. But it was an opportunity to, you know, hopefully make my grandparents' day. They love them. It helps that my grandpa just continually feeds my daughter candy. Um, he's, he is, in her mind, Grandpa Stan the Candy Man, as she calls him. Uh, so uh, <laughs> she... She loves her grandpa Stan. Um, but uh, there is always, always an opportunity. Anything that happens, the ultimate way to make it an opportunity is to take complete ownership of what has happened. You know, I think I've said it before, is be a, I think Maxwell calls it a blame buster. 
Think about something that happened this week that you blamed someone else for, even if it was their fault. Even if it was their fault. I would imagine those of you that are married have probably blamed your spouse about something this week. Well, is that an opportunity to get better? No. You're refusing to get better when you blame someone else. Even if it is on them, who cares? Guess what? You're going to screw up too. You're going to do some silly things. But as so long as we look at it as an opportunity to get a little bit better, we will continue progressing forward. Don't waste something in your life happening to get a little bit better. Don't waste it. Good, bad, indifferent. It's all an opportunity to get better. It's all an opportunity to push you closer to where it is that you want to be. You know, I've asked this question a number of times, but how many of you have thought about where it is that you want to be? What does excellence look like? So many people in this world are just wandering around. Wandering. Stop wandering. Find out what it is that you want to become. Write it down and tell somebody. Because what we all can use is accountability. That's key in anything that we do. And know that wherever it is that you want to go, whatever it is that you want to do, you don't have the answers. If you had the answers, you'd already be there. And if what it is that you want to do you know that you can get the answers pretty easily, I'd aim a little bit higher. What does that look like? And how will positivity, optimism, and belief play into that plan? My guess is it will play a massive, massive role in you getting there, in you doing something that maybe has never been done in your family, never been done in your industry, never been done, period. Because if you set your goals that high, if you pursue that level of excellence, even if you don't get there, you'll get pretty damn far. I've talked about it, actually I talked about it here, uh, I think for the first time, was Whatever your goal is, whatever your picture of excellence is, I would suggest doubling that. Because again, it's not about the result. It's about getting better each day. And what I know is when your goal is maybe double what you originally thought, your urgency with which you get better each day will massively increase, pulling you closer to where it is that you want to be faster. And not that speed is everything when it comes to improvement, but we all only have so much time here. It will come to an end one day. So where is it that you want to go? What does that look like? If you've never thought about it, what I would tell you to do is, a lot of you spend a lot of time in the, in the van. Turn off the radio and think about it. Figure out what that looks like. Write it down. What are your professional goals? What are your financial goals? What's something fun you wanna get one day? Is it a boat? Is it a, you know, place in the woods? Is it, you know, whatever it is. I, I don't know, it's different for everybody. But write that down. And then what have we talked about before? Work backwards. Put it out there 
understand what it would take to get there and then just work backwards. What do you need to do today to pull you a little bit closer? You know, maybe that looks like all things, even big ones, if you break it down and work backwards, are pretty easy to get there. You know, if you want to save up for a boat, well, what, what's a boat cost? Well, work backwards. How many dollars do you need to save each day to get there? Think about all the things we could buy if we didn't buy stupid stuff. But you never develop that plan. You never get better each day until you identify what it is that you want or where it is that you want to go. Professionally, what's that look like? Where, where is that that you want to be? And then work backwards. What books do I need to be reading? Who, what people do I need to be talking to? What podcasts do I need to be listening to? All of these things will pull you closer to who it is that you want to be. And what I will tell you from experience on my journey of pursuing where it is that I want to go, it's all about just little pieces. If you want to be somewhere one day in your career and you boil it down, what I can tell you is if you decide that, hey, I need to listen to a, some sort of professional or leadership podcast every single day for 20 minutes. What I will tell you is after the first day and after the first six months, you're not going to feel any closer to where it is that you want to go. And that's what you have to battle. But what I will tell you is you keep up that consistency. You continue to push to get better and better each day. You start connecting all these dots. This is why I'm able to stand up here and talk about this stuff because it just took little pieces. I started listening to this stuff like, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, reading books, doing stuff. I didn't know what in the hell I was doing. They literally posted a picture on Facebook the other day of us when we were, when we opened up Columbus. Oh my God. One, Tyler, get a haircut. <laughs> Two, I was like, oh my God. I remember that like it was yesterday and I had no, I'm like looking at the picture of myself going, you have no idea what you're doing. Not a clue. At the time, I think I'd been doing it. I'd been in the business for like two years. Not a, not an idea of what I'm doing. But yet today I've got a lot more knowledge. Now I still don't know it all. I never will. I learn something every day. I learned like four or five things yesterday. It was exciting. but it just took little bits and pieces. Little bits and pieces all the way. Meeting people, talking to people. You know, one of the funniest things that I've noticed in my life is that, you know, there's always, if you had to name like, okay, if you think about your professional career or even personally or whatever it is, you know, there's always those people you wanna meet, right? There's always those people like, God, if I could just like talk to that person or like be associated with them, like that'd be super cool. What I will tell you is if that is a goal of yours, if you know that that person is a key to your success, there is a way to get to them. And the best way to get to them is to use what we've talked about today. Positivity, optimism, and belief. If you want a mentor and you're not sure how to approach them, send them something useful. I've talked about this before. I mean, kind of creepy, but there's a number of my mentors that don't necessarily know that they're my mentors. I just somewhat creepily follow what they do. And I've told a couple of them that, so it's not as creepy. But, I mean, think about those people that you know that are doing what you want to do, like, go figure out what they're doing. Work the plan backwards. Get a little bit better each day. And one day, you will wake up, and you will be like, oh, my God. I'm really a hell of a lot closer to where I want to be than when I started. 
and it's just little bits and pieces. Don't set a goal of trying to read a book a week. I mean, you can, but good luck finding the time to do that. What's 10 pages look like? It's probably 20 minutes. You'll probably find 20 minutes. Set those small goals because consistency is the key to achieving anything. But it also stresses positivity, optimism, and belief. But you want to stretch those things because the more you do it, the stronger you build those things. You know, as we wrap up today, the biggest thing that I want to relay is that you can do anything that you want to do. Trust me, it, 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 literally, if you take the optimism and positivity and belief in yourself, you can't help but achieve what you want to achieve. I know that sounds crazy. I know it does, but you will. Because think about it, your competition, and I say competition loosely, others that are wanting to go to that same level or do that same thing or whatever it is, most of them will never leverage those three things because they're too busy blaming others, too busy waiting on things to happen, too busy complaining. So let them go do that. You probably know someone right now, it's like, that dude is never going to get anywhere because all he does is blame everybody else for every problem that he's ever had in his entire life. Let them do that. Get out of there. Get. Do, get. You may have to fire a friend, you know? That person that's always bringing you down. I've fired friends before. Sorry, man. This just ain't going to work. <laughs> I just don't want to, I don't want your vibes. They ain't good. You're kind of miserable, actually. Get those people out of the way. Understand where it is that you want to go and go there. We're here to help. I'm here to help. If you want to go somewhere, I'll give you. I mean, you'd be surprised that people that send me emails and stop by and ask for, hey, what's a book I can read? What do I need to be doing over here? Sure. Let's talk about it. I love this stuff. This is what we're about. This is the company that we've tried to build is one where you can come and do anything that you want to do. We're here to help. Now, does it mean when you come and say, hey, I'd like to go do this, I'm going to tell you, well, go do it tomorrow. No, you may not be ready, and that's okay, but we can start you on that path as opposed for you waiting there and just getting mad at some point in time because no one ever tapped you on the shoulder and said, hey, do you want to do this? Take that initiative. Believe in yourself. If you want to go do something, we're here to remove those obstacles so that you can be successful. Because guess what? The more successful you are, the more opportunity we provide for so many of you that are sitting here today. We just happen to put in furnaces and water heaters. That's it. That's all we're looking to do. Just get a little better each day. Open doors remove roadblocks, find solutions for people so that they can be successful. But it's a two-way street. You've got to be willing to believe in yourself to go become something that you are not today. It's all in your hands. Know that we are here to help. And know that we want to see you succeed. We want you to pursue excellence. We want you to break records. We want you to do things that you never thought possible. That is what we are about. 
thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed what you heard, I would greatly appreciate if you would rate the show or share it with someone who might enjoy it. As the name suggests, we are always looking to grow, so let me know in the comments what you thought and if there is anything you would like to hear on future episodes. Come back again soon, and always, keep growing out there.